If you don't know the history, Tecla Structures was originally called Xsteel and sold by CSC out of the UK. I recently stumbled across the first Xsteel version we received back in 1995, which was the first version of Xsteel created for Windows as far as I'm aware. It came on seven 3.5 inch floppy disks, and after installation it uses only 33 or so megabytes of disk space, so quite small compared to today's uh, Tecla versions. If we start Xsteel, just close the license, maximize the screen. The first thing you notice is the user interface. I'll start a new model so we can see what the icons look like. And as you can see, it's very, very primitive, very 90s looking icons and screen layout. Uh, but I guess to ex be expected for a 25 year old bit of software. If we look at the menus, you'll notice that um, they're actually quite similar to uh, to the versions of, of, of Tecla from 2015 and prior, so not too much has changed. Obviously, it's um, it was more enhanced, but a lot of the commands are still quite familiar. First thing we need to do is create a view. So by default, there's no views created, uh, and there's no grids also. So we need to go to view. So go to properties, view. There's no option to load in a view setting. So I'll type in 3D. I'll make it a perspective view and then go view, create view, and basic view, which is quite similar to what it was, or what it is in the current Tecla versions. First thing I need to do now, like I said, is to create a grid. So if we go to the points menu, we go to grid. No option to load a grid setting. So I have to type these in manually. I'll copy and paste some of these. Make that 6,000. Fit work area is not a right mouse click option. We've got to go to the view menu, uh, fit work area, all views. There's no zooming options on the mouse wheel, mouse scroll wheel or panning options. So the mouse doesn't work at all for that. The zooming commands on the left hand side menu here. So zoom window is that icon. I can pick two points and zoom in that way. I can use arrow keys on my keyboard to pan around. Uh, and I can also use uh, this, these commands on the left hand side to zoom out or the one next to it to zoom back in again just using mouse clicks that way. So quite primitive to zoom around the model. Also notice there's no uh, tool tips when you hover over these icons here I don't really know what the commands are. I've really just got to try them and see what sort of prompts I get. If I now go and try to put it in a column I come over to the left hand side menu here and if I double click on column properties we can see here this uh, the dialog box looks quite similar to uh, again Tecla versions uh, from year 2015 and earlier. If I click OK on that just to accept the defaults, and I'm going to click an intersection of the grid line there, and it's given me an error message: position not found. So back in XD on the early versions, we had to create what we call grid points. So go to the menu, click on grid points, pick on the grid. That would then put points on the intersection of each grid line. Without those we weren't able to put in any columns. If I go back to column command again and pick a point on the screen you can see now I get the columns appearing. Now just model a beam between those two columns. So if I double click on the beam properties you can see it's quite similar again. I'll just accept the defaults, click OK on that and then it's picking between the two columns to put the beam in. And I'll zoom in and start putting some connections on. If you looked on the right hand side menu, that's where all the Tecla connections are. Back then they were called macros. If we go through all the pages, there's uh, two, three, four pages and that's all. Uh, there's probably less than 60 odd connections in that set. If we're going to find the base plate connection, double click that. You have a look at the properties of that, it's very, very basic. So we can enter the thickness and size of the base plate. Uh, a few options. Uh, a lot of the options are really just around design, but really all we've got is, is plate from upper edge, plate from lower edge, and whether you want holes or bolts. And that's all the options you've got in the base plate component. Click OK on that, pick the column, and then pick the point where you want the base plate to go. And then you'll see that we get an error message, illegal Z direction. So if I have a look at what that means, if I double click on the component, or the connection. If we go into direction, back in the older versions we had no auto option for direction. So 
every time we put a connection on we'd have to go and manually set this so by default the base plate was set to plus Z so we need to choose either a plus X or plus Y option so I'll use uh, plus X pick the column again pick the point and now it puts on a base plate we zoom out and zoom into the top of the column we'll go back a page go to the end plate connection again very few options we've got thickness of the end plate uh, a few parameters uh, and then a direction again we'll leave this one as plus Z see what happens click OK column beam and yeah that works because plus Z is the right direction for this case and then arrow across to the other end use the end plate component pick and pick and once you start adding connections you notice that the views are all in wireframe there's no rendered views back in 1995 so it made modeling a, a little bit more challenging it's really difficult to see what was going on in some of these connections which is why uh, class check I think was probably more valuable back in the uh, in the earlier versions and it is probably today where today we can visualize and see what's going on a lot more easily the only real option we had to make things look a little bit more realistic was double clicking on the view going into display and changing the option from fast to exact and that would uh, just essentially hide the lines we couldn't really see much more detail if I just pan across the other side so it really doesn't clean it up too much apart from just hide some hidden lines to see the connection material for going to display here we can turn on parts in components but as you can see it doesn't really hide that away properly so it's still a bit difficult to see so I'll just fit the work area so we can see where we're up to and I'll zoom into just that area there so if we create some drawings now uh, first thing we need to do is of course number the model like we do uh, in any version so we're going to number all parts create a drawing of this beam here first thing to do go to properties menu and we go down to assembly drawing there's a few pre-save settings there's no actual beam option so I'll just use rafter as an example load that if we have a look around at all the uh, different options again quite familiar uh, but far less options than what we have today if we look at view same sort of thing dimensioning this is very similar to what we have today just only one tab however dimension properties we can set the uh, text height part properties if we look at something like part mark uh, how, how, how far that's come in the current version so in this version here we really could just choose what elements we want to have on we couldn't control the content like we can today okay so creating the drawing of that if we go to the drawing menu and we go assembly drawing and then we bring up drawing list now if we look at the drawing list it's quite similar to some of the more recent versions of, of Tekla however just far more basic but very similar options down the right hand side to open the drawing we can't double click on it we need to click on the open button and again we have to zoom in using the zoom commands there's no true type fonts in this version it was a, a font called romsim I think it was it was some font that was native to xdeal uh, moving things around same as probably what it is today to a degree we zoom back out again but as you can see it's a very simple beam this one but um, really not that much different to what it's outputting today to some degree there are of course no features like cloning or intelligent dimensions so once a drawing was edited we had to freeze every drawing and when the model changed every dimension had to be fixed manually so we did waste a lot of time on the drawing editing side of things after revisions anyway I hope you enjoyed that brief look at the origins of Tekla structures it was interesting to see how far it's come but also how similar it is to today's versions